Hi, welcome to Real Magic View. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is my summary more than review of the session 2023. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe and then after, during or beforehand, go and check out quickly onlinemagic.co. Learn from a pro, onlinemagic.co, everyone. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Um, so that's my online magic course, school, resource, whatever you want to call it. It's so big now, I don't know what to call it, but it's basically from absolute beginner to professional cards, coins, ropes, live sessions, mentalism, uh, live sessions every week, all of them uploaded, 800 plus videos of me and a few other people teaching you or improving your magic. So have a look at that. This is day two where I'll just be banging through what was on and giving you a very uh, short, I was going to say pithy, but it's not going to be, it's going to be rambly, um, opinion on what I saw. Remember again, I was running about all over the place, so if there's uh, something that I haven't got a lot to say on, because I didn't see much of it, it's no reflection on the quality. It's just what was happening because of my hosting duties. So the day started with the morning session, which is so... F I love the morning session on a magic convention because everybody's just ruined afterwards, and it's fascinating. There's people there because some people are really excited, some people are still kind of hungover, some people are still drunk, uh, and it's just a lovely atmosphere. And... Yeah, paradoxically it is. Anyway, had a lovely time on stage uh, bringing on the, starting the morning session, which the first speaker was Alex Romanoff talking about the art, magic in art history, which he'd done his PhD on. I didn't see much of it, unfortunately, because what had happened is Darren Delaney was going to be on, but he couldn't make it. So Andy had said, do you want to do something in the middle, you know, as a middle section? Of course, my initial response was to say no, uh, but I said yes. So when Alex was on, I was kind of sort of backstage and in the corner working out what I was going to say. Um, I based my bit on, uh, on a thing I've done before, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, so I didn't really see much of it. I wasn't focused on it. It seemed very tight. It seemed interesting. I'm interested in the history of magic more than I used to be. And um, we'll talk about why later when I talk about Luke Germain. But it, yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't there, so I can't really comment on, on the lecture. I was on next, that's why I can't, can't, can't see a bit of a, I'm, I'm you know, walking on stage to all those people, um, was slightly nerve-wracking. I'm one of those people that doesn't feel like they have anything to share until I, until I start talking, and I realise I probably still haven't, but I'm still going to tell them. And I did a thing that, based on something I do in my lectures, where I talk about the fear, getting over the fear of doing certain moves and doing certain tricks, which I suffer from, but luckily it doesn't stop me like it used to, but I do know it does a lot of people. So I used um, a spectator cuts the aces routine to demonstrate, you know, how to make things like the side steal, which can be very scary to do if you've never done them, uh, easier for you by using the environment around you. And, uh, and I kind of, I wasn't improvising, I'd kind of worked out what I was going to say, but I didn't have much time, so I was worried it was all going to go all over the place, and I was going to rush through it, but I was quite happy with it, it was flawed, um, but I made myself kind of stop at a point where I, I could have gone on for ages, and, you know, I hope it was as concise and made sense, you know, I can't be objective, I, I definitely, you know, I was coming up off of it going, well, it could have been better, um, but people, I had some lovely feedback, um, so that was good. And next was Andre Chinichka. Pchinichka. Um, chin ni chka. You see? So that's how I remembered it, or didn't remember it, and I had to get my phone out and have a look at it on stage. I'm just determined to get the pronunciation right, and I've probably got it wrong now a few days later. So he, that, was, that was interesting because he was doing a talk on. He's the guy that, that brought us butterfly cards. And he was doing, again, quite mathematical-based talk on clocking cards, which is, uh, very briefly, a way of kind of looking at the cards you've got, adding certain things up and realising what card's missing, without having to kind of, you know, it's not like a stack in that way, but you, you know, you look at all the clubs, add them all up, and you'll know straight away which card is missing. Which, as soon as you say that to me, I'm out. I'm kind of like, I don't mean I'm not interested, I'm just not going to be able to do it. Um, not yet, but I'm planning on working on that sort of thing. 
So the, the first five minutes of the lecture, I was thinking, I'm not really connecting to this. And then it all sort of came together the second half. And it was actually really impressive. You did some really impressive stuff and then showed you how you could do it with butterfly cards. But it was nice because it wasn't the whole, most of it was not about butterfly cards. It was about doing it with a standard deck, a borrowed deck. And he finished off with this thing. And if you've got butterfly cards or markup, you can do this, which, which I liked. And it was actually really engaging. I thought he really brought it back round for me. I kind of lost it a little bit when he was talking about mathematics, but I'm going to do that when anybody's talking about that. So, or math. Uh, but by the end of it, actually, I was quite engaged. And I thought it was great. And he did some really impressive stuff. And, you know, I was thinking, is this going to work? And when it did, it was, you know, got that, that sort of gut reaction from the audience and magicians, which is, which is a lovely thing. Uh, again, I was, I, was, I was actually really enjoying it and watching it, but I was more just sitting there thinking, oh, thank God I didn't die. Um, I... I it seems to it together. So that was, again, a lovely uh, morning session. Then Morton Christensen's lecture, which was lovely. And the nice thing is he did different things. I think he did a lot that he'd done in his, his previous shows. He's got, if you don't know, if you go on YouTube, um, Morton has... Did I, I didn't say Andre then, did I? No. Uh, Morton has a show free on YouTube called Morton's Night. It's night translated. Um, it's not Morton's Night, but it's whatever it is in Danish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to get that wrong then. Uh, so Morton was FISM Comedy Magic winner. He did some great stuff. Again, when you watch someone like Morton or um, Nick DeFat, it's, he, he's taken tricks, the, you know, classic tricks and changed them a lot and, and, and made stuff and kind of put stuff together. And he did this trick with an envelope and a, this lovely playing card prediction where, you know, he'd take a card out and it said, ooh, and everybody had to go, ooh, and then he'd unfold and it was a card and it would be an, and, and it was, it was based on a kind of index for an envelope and an envelope and an envelope. But it's, you know, it's the sort of thing, again, you read in a book and go, oh, I'm not making that, but it was just great you, you, and it made me go back to those books that I've kind of you know those chapters in books even going back to things like Mark Wilson I remember re reading the Mark Wilson book and going oh, that looks interesting but I'm not gonna make that and kind of go no that's what I should be doing and I'm not gonna go through what anything that more everything that Morton did in this lecture because you should see it see it see it but there's loads of really imaginative funny stuff again he's someone that's quite similar on in his lecture than he is in his act of course, his act is an extension of it, but it, it was nice to see. It felt like with him and Mark Elby and people like that, it, was, it, was, it wasn't just a straight lecture. It was, felt like something different and something that was sort of, sort of a show, but not, but not a performance and a lecture as well. And, uh, and again, it sort of added to this kind of eclectic mix of everything, you know, from, from mathematics to science of magic to this, this kind of really creative stuff to Nick's comedy, you know, it was a, it was a real good mix. And even by that time, you know, the second afternoon, you knew you were part of a very, very strong uh, lineup at a convention. So uh, Morton Christensen, again, he hasn't published his FISM winning act online. And I think that's just very important. So if you get a chance to see him, as I said, with, well, pretty much everybody else do take that chance. It was, it was great lecture. Now, Luke Jamey, as Josh and Andy said, he's one of the people that have been doing a lecture at the convention for 12 years in a row, I think. And he's always trying to do something different. And this was no exception. So last time he did this whole thing on card magic, um, which was in line with his, you, you lying to yourself. Ah, oh, what's it called? You're only lying to yourself, it's called, isn't it? You're only lying to yourself. Yeah, this book and download, it's got loads of like, hours and hours of download to it. And was, his lecture last, year, last time was just brilliant. I loved it. He was saying, oh, I wouldn't do this card magic, but we're doing it, you know, I'm, I'm using this as a reason to talk to you about it. But actually, I think a lot of it is very, very doable and really, really strong. You know, he's someone that knows what's strong and what's not. Now, this was, everybody knew he was going to do something different. And Luke did a lecture on magic. But it wasn't just showing you a load of magic tricks. He was using certain routines to demonstrate the concepts he was talking about. So I, again, I missed the last bit of the lecture. So I saw kind of the first half, first three quarters, and I was, again, I was in and out. But he started off with this, you know, this matrix, very, very courageous matrix routine. And to, you know, for someone like Luke, who's known for doing a certain thing, I mean, it's kind of a mentalism wonderkind, which is the wrong way of saying it, but you know what I mean? And then 
to then be on stage doing a thing with a, he's doing stuff with silks and coins, you know, later on, and the coin and um, cylinder and coins, you know, all these classic routines, but then talking about the, you know the history of magic and why we should know the history and and, be, and Luke's very opinionated, and I think and I don't agree with all those opinions, but I like the fact he's kind of edgy about it and he's kind of and he's very clipped and strong about it, and it's, it's the way he presents is. It's not like me when I'm all over the place rambling. He's kind of knows what he's going to say, and you have this very sort of strong PowerPoint. So it was, it was good to see him do that and to take that. Uh, you know, I was just going to say someone that's known for being, oh, I've brought it back for once, for being that mentalist and being incredibly influential with with that stuff on stage it takes incredible courage. And yes, it wasn't perfect, and he knows that there were moments where you know technique kind of went a little bit, but kind of made the point and it was incredibly lovely to watch. I mean, I love that stuff. He's doing a matrix when actually the coins are, but the cards are disappearing and then they're coming back and he's using all these techniques and doing them very well, actually. But again, you, someone that doesn't focus and spend his life in that place to, to, to have the, the confidence, which he did look confident, to present that stuff to us. I think he's harder than someone who isn't known. You know, he, yes, he's got the audience on his side a little bit anyway, because he has that respect. But I think to take that risk is something, and I know I keep talking about it, but if, because I find that incredibly difficult, I think. So it's to, it's to be applauded. And it's beautiful magic. You know, it's really, really lovely magic. And Luke, which I didn't see, did a lecture at half 11 at night. I mean, amazing, till about half one in the morning, which apparently was stunning, where he helped people out with routines, and, and which I don't know anything about. You'll have to talk to other people about it. Mark James, you know, someone I've seen kind of on and off in bits and pieces. I know he, he did something on the online, um, online convention that Vanishing did, but I haven't seen him perform loads throughout the years. And his lecture was really, it was, again, it wasn't just, here's a load of tricks. He started off, actually, it's quite funny. At the beginning, he said to me, look, the, the show's going to start as my show, the lecture's going to start as my show starts, which is, you know, a, a, the music I play before I go on. And then I'm going to come on as if I'm doing a show, because that's an important part of it, because he was talking about building a show. And that happens the minute that people walk in the auditorium. Why has he chosen that music? And... And of course, I didn't realise, and it's totally my bad, that what you're saying is I'm going to play the whole intro music as people that will be playing as people walk in. So I said, Mark James! And then there was about like four or five minutes of intro music. And I shouldn't, I, he'd asked me to tell them what was happening. And I did it wrong. So people were like, where is he? <laughs> and me and him were laughing backstage, kind of thinking, uh, and I was just apologetic. But anyway, and, and it was lovely. And he started off with his routines. Um, there's this lovely Vanishing the Elephant think of the show's called Valishing the Elephant and it's this kind of gag but then stopped and talked to us about why he did certain things so he still did his routines but it was all about why does this go there how did this show get put together what are the details of the show I wear this thing because of this and and it made me kind of and many people I'm sure go I don't think enough about this stuff I've really got to get back to the drawing board or even turn up to the drawing board in the first place might be a good idea uh, so again very um, strong lecture, really well planned, loads of lovely, really lovely thing at the end about the wrong music, if you choose the wrong music, which is, was just such a great way to finish it, genuinely hilarious. I'm not going to, you'll see him lecture hopefully, and I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it was just really, really lovely, brought the house down, and uh, and yeah, and great, and he, he hosted the, the gala show at the end of Sunday, but we'll talk about that soon. So, you know, the, the big thing that everybody was waiting for, not taking any, anything away, of course, from anybody else, was Richard Turner. You know, Richard Turner was doing his show. He wasn't doing a lecture. He did a lecture, kind of, well, sort of interview lecture the next day. But the fact that you're going to get a chance to see Richard Turner doing the show that he turns up to do for lay people and magicians as well, that I'd seen in the do bits of in the documentary of Delt, which is obviously different now because I think a lot of it is, is called Delt, was a real opportunity and I was praying that I wasn't going to be disappointed by it. I knew it wasn't going to be, but it's one of those things, you know, never meet your heroes or, or watch their shows sometimes. And it, were, it didn't disappoint. It was right up my street. Richard talks about all the things I love 
people talking about you know, motivation. He had the old acronym of DELT, which I'm not going to do now because it's going to ruin it. But it, it was going through that the whole show and it was genuinely inspiring. His stories are incredible. And as he said at the beginning, you know, people think of making them up for the sake of theatre. He doesn't say that, those words. But, and after a free going, surely he's making this up because they're so great. And there wasn't a boring moment. It was an hour and a half. And I was thinking, are we going to have an hour and a half of card magic? How's that going to be? Which was fascinating, intriguing, dark. There was some dark stuff in there. There's this moment when he takes... <laughs> And I'm not laughing at the stories, you know, he's telling the stories about his life that are so disturbing. And then he just at the end of the most disturbing meet, he goes, right, want to have some fun? And it's like, what? And, and that kind of worked. You know, he's got this kind of mischievousness, which I, um, which I love. And it was just, it was such a good show. I mean, the standing ovation was, you know, clearly going to happen. You knew, and it did. And I think we all knew we were seeing something that we'd probably never see again. Because I don't think he's going to be performing loads now, someone said, whether that's just rumour, I don't know. But also, it was, you know, the magic was incredibly strong. It was presented in a beautiful way. It was a load of gambling routines which didn't bore anybody. Now, that dam- sounds like it's damning with faint praise because obviously it was much more than that. But even that says a lot, you know, the fact that after an hour and a half, you're still really in there. So that was Richard Turner. I'm going to talk about Richard Turner a lot more in a minute. Um, But that was the end of day three. And the magic of editing, you see, because what you might have noticed, Sarah, that I was a little bit distracted at the end of all that. And um, because the bloke knocked on the door to fix the heating, so I wound it all up. And then, uh, joyfully, I put my camera on and the tripod collapsed, doing potentially thousands of pounds worth of damage to my one and only camera, which is great fun. Uh, It looks like the (laughs) the damage may uh, only be cosmetic, but I'm hiding the tears well, aren't I? That was the... <laughs> oh, God. That was the end of uh, day two. I'm praying this isn't going to collapse again. And uh, I think the lens is okay. Uh, and Yeah, it was great. Anyway, let's do day three next. Go to... Uh, go and have a look at onlinemagic.co or something. <laughs>